Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a fabric belt. The great thing about this belt is it's quick, it's simple, plus you can choose your own fabric and it's customizable in size. Now in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to put in a buckle and also how to put in eyelets so that it's adjustable. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and go over the supplies we're going to need. So first you need your fabric for your belt. I'm using 100% cotton quilters cotton fabric. You can really use different types of fabric if you wish. The only thing that may vary would be the interfacing. So for this interfacing, I'm using a heavyweight fusible interfacing because my fabric's kind of lightweight and I want to add a little stability to it. So depending on the way your fabric may determine on what kind of interfacing you're going to get. Also, what I have here is my all-purpose thread. I have eyelets. These are going to be for creating holes in the belt. So depending on how many you want is how many eyelets you're going to get. The size of these eyelets are 532 and it came in a kit. So I have the little kit for putting them together right here. You're definitely going to need these along with a hammer. And I have this little tiny hole puncher, which I'm going to use to help me create the holes in my belt. But you can also just use scissors as well. I have a tape measure. This is for measuring how long we're going to want the belt to be. So you want to measure yourself. A buckle. Now buckles, of course, come in different widths. This is one and five eighths that I picked up at the fabric store, but you can use whatever buckle you want. Scissors. I have my sewing gauge, fabric marker, pins and needles are my usual. I also have my rotary mat cutter and ruler because I'm going to use that to cut out my fabric since it's just straight edges, but you can also use scissors as well. The amount of fabric you're going to need really depends on the length of the belt that you're making. So for this, you're going to need your tape measure and you're going to need to measure yourself. Now definitely measure around the area of your body where you would want the belt to rest. So for me, I put on a pair of pants that I would normally wear a belt with and I actually put my tape measure through the belt loops like it's a belt and that way I can get an accurate measurement. To that measurement, you're going to add an extra 11 and a half inches because we don't just want the belt to meet in the middle, we actually want one to overlap the other. So it's better to have a little bit extra. So take the circumference that you're gonna have on your body at 11 and a half inches and then that should be fine. Now it really also depends on how wide your fabric is. So this fabric is 45 inches in width and for my belt, I only need about 44 inches. So I can just go ahead and cut a strip and that's gonna be long enough. But if you need something that's a lot longer than that and your fabric's not wide enough, you might have to get creative by cutting two strips and sewing them together or cutting it across lengthwise. We already know the length of our strip, but how wide do we need to cut that strip? That is gonna be the width of our belt and that is gonna be determined by either your belt loops or actually the piece of the buckle that you're gonna be sewing the belt to. So I'm gonna be sewing it to this middle bar right here and that's gonna restrict the width that I'm gonna be able to make my belt. So I measured it and it's one and five eighths. You're gonna take the finished width of belt that you want, so in my case, one and five eighths, you're gonna multiply it by two. So one and five eighths times two plus one inch. Now that one inch is for seam allowance. So just remember, take your width, multiply it by two, then just add one inch and that's all you need to do. So I needed a strip that was let's say 44 inches and my width one and five eighths times two plus one is four and a quarter. So then that's gonna determine my width and I'm just gonna cut my four and a quarter and I have a strip that's 44 inches in length. Cut a piece of interfacing that's going to be the same size as your fabric. Now with the interfacing, you can either use fusible or you can use sew-on interfacing. Of course, the fusible is a lot easier to use, but you can use sew-in if your fabric choice can't handle a lot of high heat. So I'm just using a cotton, so it's fine for me to use the fusible. Also, you wanna use a weight of fusible interfacing or regular interfacing that will add stability to your fabric. So the lighter the fabric is, the heavier the fusible interfacing should be. If you're making a belt out of denim, you probably don't need to worry about fusible interfacing. So I have the right side of my fusible interfacing up, and then the side that has the glue bubbles, you can actually feel a texture that's gonna go to the wrong side of my fabric and it's going along the whole length of my belt. I already have my iron heating up it's pretty hot. I'm going to go ahead and lay a press cloth 
And because my belt is so long, I'm just gonna have to do a section at a time. So go ahead, dampen it. Then carefully place my iron in the first section. Just leave it for a few seconds. And then you're going to lift it up and move it over to the next section. So I'm going to do that to till my interfacing is fused to my whole strip. Take your belt, fold it in half lengthwise so the right side of your belt or the fabric is on the inside and you're looking at the interfacing on the outside. Match up all your raw edges because all along the long edge we're going to sew that at our machine. Using a regular length straight stitch, you're gonna sew a half inch seam allowance on the side of that raw edge. The short ends are going to remain open. I went ahead and trimmed my seam allowance, so I only left about a quarter of an inch here. Then I'm going to grab my fabric marker because on one end, you're gonna draw the shape that you want the end of the belt to look like. So in my case, I want it to look a little bit curvy. So I mark the middle point, and then starting at the stitches, not the edge of the seam allowance, but the stitches, I'm gonna draw a slight curve because I want it to be a little bit curvy. But of course you can do whatever you want. You could just do straight across if you want a straight edge or you can do a pointy edge, it's your belt. Once you have your lines, go ahead, take it to your machine and you're gonna stitch right along that because then that's gonna form the end of our belt. After you do your stitches, go ahead and trim your seam allowance. Because I have a curvy seam, I went ahead and cut these notches so I don't have all this fabric bunched into this little tiny area. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and flip it right side out. So this part is a little bit difficult to start. I'm just gonna take the end that I just stitched and I'm just gonna try to turn it to the inside best I can. So it's kind of stuck like this. Grab something long in this case I'm just using a paintbrush or the end of a paintbrush. You can use a knitting needle or you can also use a skewer and it's just going to help you turn it right side out. So I'm pulling the outside edges. Here's my brush and then I'm just kind of pushing in the same time. Once you get it started it'll be a lot easier. And you just keep doing this till it comes out of the other end and then you can just pull it all the way. And then when you're done with that, go ahead and press it flat. My belt is right side out and I pressed it. So the next thing we're gonna do is top stitch around the whole perimeter of the belt, except for this end that's still open. We're not gonna deal with that quite yet. So you're just gonna sew as close as you can to the edge all the way around. And if you want it to look kind of neat, you can go ahead and use a contrasting color. A top stitch is going to help make your belt look finished and professional. And you can see I'm just sewing right along the edge. I'm actually lining up the fabric with this part of my foot right here so I can make sure that everything ends up even. For the end that's still open, you're going to go ahead and baste across the end at the quarter inch mark. So you just need to do the largest stitch on your machine. You don't have to worry about any back stitching. We're just going to go straight across to hold those ends together. On the end that has the basting stitches that we just did, you're gonna grab your sewing gauge and you're gonna mark it at the one and a half inches because we're gonna measure from the edge of the belt up one and a half inches. And you can see I already did that and you're gonna draw a line across. That's gonna be our fold line for putting on the buckle. Then you're going to take your marker and you're gonna mark right directly in the center of this fold line because that's where we're gonna put our first grommet. Where the two lines intersect, we're gonna start putting our eyelet. So I have one eyelet here. This is what an eyelet looks like. This is the 532 size. And what you're gonna do, I'm looking at the right side of my belt or what I'm designating as the right size. The flat side of the eyelet, that's the side that goes on the right side of the belt. So this is gonna go on the back side of the belt, this underside of the eyelet. I went ahead and just used this really tiny hole punch to punch through just to get the hole started. You can also try to use your seam ripper to push through there. You're just trying to get the hole big enough so that you're able to just squeeze this bottom portion on and you just see the top portion on the right side. So once I have my hole, started, I can go ahead and take my scissors and push them 
through the hole to try to make it a little bit bigger so then I could push this through. I have my eyelet in and I flipped over my belt so I'm looking at the wrong side. Here's the right side. So you just gotta make sure it's pushed all the way in and you can just kind of see it sticking out here on the back side. So now we're gonna grab our little tool. This came in the kit. So you have this little short piece with a groove. This fits right underneath the eyelet. So the eyelet is fitting in the groove. So I'm gonna fit that like that. Then you're gonna take this tall piece and you'll see there's a groove on one side of the tall piece and that's gonna also go to the eyelet. So here on top, I'm gonna to grab my hammer and I'm gonna hit it pretty hard a couple of times and it's gonna flatten out the eyelet on the other side. Let's go ahead and remove this bottom piece. And there you can see, there's my finished eyelet, finished on the right side, finished on the back side. The reason I did the eyelet was to get past this little latch part right here. So if your belt buckle doesn't have this piece, then you can go ahead and skip the eyelet. But since I do, what I'm gonna do is I have the belt right side up now, the buckle's right side up. I'm going to slip the fabric through this middle part bring it up, take this little latch part, it's gonna fit through the eyelet, and then the fabric's gonna get folded back down again. Okay, then I'm gonna take this part and I'm gonna fold it over, so pretty much the eyelet ends up right on that fold, that folded edge, flip it over to the wrong side, take this raw edge, and fold it so then your basting stitch ends up right on the fold line. So we're not gonna see a raw edge. It's just gonna be a nice fold. Go ahead, pin that into place. Now, depending on your buckle, because my buckle is so big, I can't just do a machine stitch right across here. So I'm gonna actually hand sew this all into place and uh, we'll show you how to do that as soon as I pin this. If you're gonna hand sew the fold into place, you're gonna grab some needle and thread, which I already have, and I already started by just coming up right underneath the fold so my knot is tucked in the side here. Any loose threads we can cut off. So what you're gonna do is go back and forth between the folded edge and then the back of the belt here. So I'm already on the folded edge, so now I'm gonna grab a little bit of the back of the belt. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the folded edge and then go back to the back of the belt. So I'm just going back and forth. And you can see I'm just doing it along this folded edge, but you can also do it on the sides as well. The last thing we need to do now is to put in more eyelets on the other end of the belt, so then we're able to buckle the belt and create the holes. So to do that, what I like to do is Draw a line down the center of the belt. Make sure you do this on the right side. Put on the belt and mark where it would be comfortable for you to buckle your belt. Then you can do additional marks. I like to do them about one and a quarter inches away from each other, so that's where the holes would be spaced. You can really do as many eyelets as you want and you would put them in the same way that we demonstrated earlier. After that, you can go ahead, remove the marks from your fabric and any basting stitches and you have a brand new belt to wear. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.